you have to go to University of Nevada in Reno. Um, our first presenter, Dr. Muhammad Mustafa, is going to talk about robust methods for UHPC early strain determination and quality control for ABC. Dr. Mustafa. Thank you, Dr. Mahavi. So, um, so this is you know, like a, a project we started like uh, last year, and the uh, the goal here is to provide you know, like a, to, uh, quality control methods for UHPC. UHPC is one of the materials that have been used extensively in the last ten years or so in ABC applications, and it will continue hopefully to grow. So, we would like you know, like to provide uh, our, um, a robust way to determine the early strengths of UHPC on site. So, um, you know, like many of the projects that use UHPC in the seismic connections or even uh, not necessarily seismic, I'm sorry, like um, uh, bridge joint connection, they have, you know, like uh, a 12 KSI at 12 hours, let's say, or maybe, you know, like uh, maybe 14 KSI after one or two days. And this is the uh, threshold at which, you know, like they can move on to the next construction stage. So the question that becomes, you know, like uh, critical, how to guarantee that you have reached this 14 KSI so that you can move on to the next like uh, phase of construction. So even if it's not 12 hours in one day or like, you know, uh, or one and a half days, it becomes still challenging to rely on cylinder testing as we can currently do because UHPC, unlike conventional concrete, you really need to prepare your cylinders in a special way. You have to do like uh, end grinding, you have to do like uh, careful testing, otherwise you'll get very um, skewed results. So we wanted to look at two established methods that have been used for conventional concrete and see if we can um, benefit in the UHPC world from these. And this is the uh, maturity method, which has like an ASTM standard, and you use sensors to track the temperature of the concrete. You develop like a maturity curve a priori in the lab, and then you put your sensors in the field and see, you know, like in let's say 12 hours or one day or whatever, whatever, you know, like maturity uh, readings you are getting from your uh, sensors and interpret this using the maturity curve that you have developed, you know, like beforehand in the lab. You can also use, you know, like cubes and instead of cylinders, if we can demonstrate that cubes are, you know, like robust enough and consistent enough to be accepted by the um, community here in the US, since we know that cylinders is the standard here. So we wanted to show also that cubes could be uh, used. And if cubes were to be used, what is the appropriate size? Two by two or four by four? You know, like for example, these are the two, you know, like conventional uh, or I would say popular sizes that we can get. And the good thing about cubes is that you don't really need end grinding because you have so many different sides. So you can pick a couple of different um, ways of testing the cube that do doesn't need any surface preparation and in turn can be done on the site. So in general, let me talk about the maturity and that's what I will talk about, you know, like uh, uh, first, what we usually do, just a quick, you know, like refresher, what's the maturity, like um, um, way of, like our ASTM standard way of uh, developing a maturity curve. You cure your specimens in the lab under standard curing condition, and you have, you know, like uh, cylinders at, you know, like uh, that are instrumented with sensors. And the ASTM requires that you test at least at five different ages. Let's say one day, two days, seven days, fourteen days, and twenty-eight days. Then you, you know, like from the sensors, you will get like a temperature history, which can be translated into a uh, like uh, maturity, like uh, index using two different methods that the ASTM acknowledge, NERF, SOL, and Arrhenius. These are equations, and you will see that the ASTM equations have some constants. So one of the key things that you are looking at in this project are the constants that the ASTM proposed for conventional concrete. Would this work if we use these same you know, like methods to establish maturity curves for UHPC or not? So that's the first question we are posing here. And the second question is, if the ASTM requires five breaking points, and we want to care about, like we care more about the early age, for example, would the 28 day early, you know, like strengths help me, you know, like predict my early strengths in two days or three days? So, what would be the optimum, you know, like uh, breaking points that you need? And when do you break your cylinders if you were to use this maturity curve for early strengths uh, estimation? Nonetheless, you know, like um, you will take this data and establish a, you know, like a maturity curve in the lab. In the construction site, you will have, let's say, this is a bridge joint, you will have your sensors inside there. In after 12 hours, your sensor pick like a 1,000, you know, like um, uh, Celsius per hour, you know, like um, uh, maturity. You go to the curve that you have developed in the lab and see what is the prediction of your compression strengths. The thing here is that, you know, like the lab versus the site condition. 
is this you know like um, a direct correlation or not so that's another thing that we uh, looked at so we did you know like uh, we just completed actually a very very extensive com experimental campaign um, we finished it almost like two weeks ago only it has taken more than a year so we have you know like worked with the most diverse um, uh, set of UHPCs that any project have done so far so we have all four proprietary mixes that are currently in the US market still like Cientic, Kurtov and Lafarge and also the ABC uh, UTC and proprietary UTC, you know, like mix that was developed earlier, you know, like a couple of years ago as part of the ABC UTC. And we've added some of these steel fiber ratios. So we tested almost a nine, nine, like close to a thousand specimen that, you know, like varies between cylinders, four by four cubes, and two by two cubes. And we used even like all the major like maturity sensor vendors around the world also. So not only from the US, but some of these companies are even uh, European companies. So we wanted to, you know, like get really to the bottom of this so that's you know like a, a typical setup for what we do when we do one of the casting you know like you'll take cylinders we'll take small uh, large cubes and we we'll take small cubes and some of the mixes as well we try to mimic some joints so that you know like we can see also if the sensor would read differently if it's in a larger you know like actual joint setting versus just a cylinder or a cube and these are some of the uh, sensors that we use some of them are multi-point some of them are single point some of them are wireless so we even try to you know like uh, cover the um, sensing technology as well as part of this project so we wanted to do a parametric study for all the mixes what we do we take cylinders we put them in a standard curing room we develop uh, the maturity curve as per the astm but also we have cylinders or cubes or whatever that are sitting in the site to mimic you know like an experimental point so we want to see you know like if we have some cylinder sitting on the site a random site during random you know like uh, times of the year so we had sensors that uh, or mixes that were done in the winter others were done in the fall some were done in the summer so we wanted to see those specimens that were not part of the maturity study or the maturity curve that was developed you know like uh, these are the ground truth pretty much you know like because we take them we have the sensor reading and in the meantime we have their breaking points as well so we wanted to see if the curves that we will develop can predict what you you know like uh, mimic in the site or not and for this, we wanted to vary the various parameters that are included in the ASTM procedure. So the first parameter that we have is, you know, like the T naught, which is one of the Arrhenius you know, like equation constants that you have seen earlier as part of the ASTM procedure. So that's, you know, like for example, you know, like three breaking points that you will get from the site. That's the curve that you have developed in the lab, and we calculate the error. The ASTM allows you, you know, like to accept um, errors up to 10%. And if your the errors are more than 10%, then you know, like you would say that okay, this curve is not valid, or this, you know, like uh, you need to re redo your curve or something like that. So we, well, this is one parameter that we've added in the post processing, and you can see here if we put, you know, like the T node as negative 15 Celsius or negative 10 or zero or plus 10, whatever, we we cover the wide range. You see the error, you know, like um, at the breaking points vary significantly. Some of the cases would give you the uh, uh, acceptable error under 10%, but some will shoot up as you can see here. So that's one thing we looked at. The other thing we looked at is a Q, which is the other, you know, like equation, the nerve soul equation. And we looked also at the same thing, the, the parameter, and we varied the parameter to see which one would give a good correlation or the best correlation. When you look at all these eight mixes that or mixtures that we did, you know, like um, uh, holistically. So we are not doing only this, per mix, but we have so many mixes now that we tested. So we wanted to do general guidance on how to use the maturity method for UHPC. The configuration is a very big thing also that we played with, you know, like we, for each of the specimens or each of the batches that we did, we had, you know, like nine breaking points, not only five as the ASTM would require. And then we start doing a mix and match, you know, like should I take the first, you know, like five breaking points or maybe take two from the first day and two from the you know like uh, three and seven days and one at 28 days so we did different configuration and we also came up with some recommendation on if you are interested to use this maturity curve for one day prediction this is what you use if you want to use it for you know like a three day prediction this is the best configuration and so on so that's another thing that we uh, looked at and uh, very soon you will see it in our design guide or, or like the abc guide that we are going to get out of this project um, here are some results also to, you know, like to, if we were to mix and match a couple of these parameters. So the T node can be varied independent from the configuration, but if we fix one configuration, you know, like, uh, and vary the T node, or if we fix the T node and vary the configuration, how this will also affect the results. So we looked at 
varying several parameters at the same time as well to have a better understanding. And here, this is the range of the, as just a summary of the range of the parameters that we included in our study. At the end of the day, you know, like when we, when it comes to developing the maturity curve, as I mentioned, we have done, you know, like eight different like uh, uh, batches that has different, you know, like five different UHPCs and three of the five had different steel fiber ratio, 1% or 2%. And we have, you know, like uh, the uh, maturity curves that we can get based on the breaking points, the nine breaking points. And we have the maturity curve that we can draw based on the interpolation as per the ASTM standard. So we also wanted to assess the ASTM you know, equation for the right, uh, developing the uh, maturity curve itself. And what we found out is that the exponential equation that the ASTM provide does not really do justice to the early age. So we are deviating from this and we are proposing in our pro project here, and you will see this again in the ABC guide that will come out of this project, a, piece li uh, a piecewise linear you know, like equation that can be more sensible to the early age and provide better, you know, like uh, uh, capturing for the early age strings. We validate the, you know, like this, you know, like piecewise linear uh, model that we are proposing. And you will see here, if we use the ASTM equation for the early age, this is how much error you get, especially in the, uh, on, uh, at one day, you will get like really, really significant errors, like 100% or, uh, or more. And these are just two selected mixes. We have so many of them, but these are two of the eight. Um, you can see the ASTM equation consistently gives you like larger error at the early age and even shoots up even for larger error at the late ages as well. Unlike, you know, like the new uh, piecewise linear model that we are proposing in this project, you can maintain, you know, like the early age error within the 10% required by the ASTM. And even if you, you reuse it for later ages as well, and you can see here as we predict, up to 28 days, you are still doing, you know, like fine, and you are not, you know, like uh, having these high errors that you can get from the other things. So that's, you know, like uh, one of the things we are doing. <clears throat> Another key thing we are doing in this project, since we have a lot of statistical data, we are providing the second thing that I mentioned, the uh, cubes versus the cylinders. So the AC, the, the here in the US, we are suited to accept, a, you know, like a compression strength as per a cylinder test. If you get a uh, seven case i, you know, like from a cube. What this seven case i translates to, if I were to do it, you know, like from a cylinder. So we are trying to, you know, like um, establish conversion factor between cubes and cylinders. But again, people have done this in um, uh, before. But uh, what makes us unique is that we did this at the early age. So no one has compared cube to cylinder strings at early age, and no one has done it for this wide range of HPC types that you have seen. So we have again. Uh, a lot of data, and you can see here we are trying to correlate the F prime C that you get from the four by four cubes and the F prime C that we get from the cylinders that are very well prepared in the lab, you know, like with the grinding, with the proper surface preparation and everything. And we can, you know, like we start looking at statistically meaningful, you know, like correlation factors. So here we found that a factor of 1.18, or maybe if we find like a, a way to approximate this to 1.2 or so. So this will be a new factor. Like, you know, if you look at the previous work that was done at the Federal Highway or the work that was done in UHPC, no one has comprehensively, you know, like provide such a convergence factor that can capture early ages as well as, you know, like late ages. So we are here, this convergence factor that we will be proposing can work as early as, you know, like one and two KSI when the concrete is still, you know, like in the first few hours and it will be statistically meaningful. As you can see here, the R square factors for some of the equations we are developing is more than uh, 90%. In fact, we are looking also at exponential, slight exponential, you know, like uh, uh, trends as opposed to just linear trends because we can found that the error will be even much, much lower. Of course, I would, as a, from an engineering and practical perspective, I would prefer the, you know, like a linear equation, an easy uh, correlation factor, let's say 1.2 or so, but if, you know, like for completeness or also for the, um, the researchers out there, we would be proposing like more, uh, I would say, you know, like accurate, if you will, equations as well. We have done this for the four by four and we are in the final stages of wrapping up, you know, like uh, this part of the study. And we have done it for the two, two by two cubes as well. You will see now when you do the two by two, you know, like the scatter gets a little bit larger here. So that's one of the things that led to the recommendation that we would recommend a four by four cube as opposed to two by two cubes, because just because of the nature of the data that we have seen, the two by two is a lot more scattered, you know, like the correlation is not as good as the uh, four by four cubes. So we have, you know, like looked at so many different things and we are now, you know, like with all this data that we have generated over the last year or so, we are trying to see what would be the best 
um, set of recommendations that will come out of this project. But this, I would say, out of 10 projects that I have done for the ABCTC so far, this project will have the most significant, you know, like ABC guide that will come out of this project because we have a lot of good uh, um, recommendations that, you know, like uh, is ready to be implemented from day one in the site. So some of the conclusions, you know, like, and again, more will come in the uh, uh, in the guide hopefully that will be published soon like later in the summer or so for the early age we showed that you know like the four by four cubes is better you know even than the three by six in terms of the consistency in terms of the cylinders the in terms of assessing the astm equation the arrhenius equation you know, like uh, shows slight better results than the nerve soul and again those are two separate methods that the astm recommend to use for maturity developing the maturity equation you know like uh, with the lab age is you know like um, close to the side ages so um, and based on the different you know like configurations these are the two codes that i mean two uh, constants that we are recommending the maturity constant and again this is not a light conclusion it took uh, you have seen you know like tons of data to be able to reach this conclusion so we are deviating completely from the astm in terms of these constants so the t node we are recommending a negative two series yes and for the q we are uh, uh, recommending a five southern kelvin for this and the last part is the piecewise linear method is the fitting method that we are proposing for the um, choice of the the configuration you know like and uh, we are developing the equations and we are finalizing them to be presented in uh, you know like the guide as i said and we will have the last part maybe it's not written here the convergence factors between the cubes and uh, cylinders as well so uh, this is you know like what i wanted to share with you today and I try to be fast so that we can catch up with the schedule again. And uh, I would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mustafa. Uh, uh, great work. Uh, as, as you mentioned uh, near the end, the project has the, the, the uh, char characteristic that it can be really directly implemented. Uh, uh, so very practical and very to the uh, to the point and um, one thing if you can dr mustafa in like less than a minute uh just walk us through uh through the basics of this so again i will give you what i understood as of putting the sensors there how long to wait uh, what is the sensor giving us what is where we put that uh, data and how what we calculate can you just again in less than a minute please uh, uh, walk us through that sure so so you know like the maturity curve development that's you know like is an independent you know like step that you can do at any time so let's say i decided to use a lafarge uhpc for you know like my project and the project is happening in two years so you know like in anticipation for the project to happen i will acquire the lafarge mix that i'm anticipating to use in the project two years from now i will take it to my lab i will do my trial mixes and i will do you know like a, a careful study that will take you know like several like uh, or like i would say you know like 30 to 40 cylinders as per the astm some of the cylinders i will leave them in the lab in a standard curing you know like room some of them i will leave them in a different setting and you know like uh, i will instrument one cylinder at least in the lab and one cylinder in this different setting and what you will do with these four pieces of data you have a cylinder with a sensor in the lab you have a cylinder in the in the lab uh, uh, that you will test you have a cylinder with a sensor in the site I mean, again, a random site, not necessarily the construction site. And, you know, like you have the extra cylinders that you left in the site to be tested. What we will do, you know, like we will use the uh, the sensors. What the sensors give you is a temperature history. It's a very simple temperature, you know, like a thermometer, if you will, that you put inside the concrete. It reads and records the internal, you know, like temperature of the concrete. And there is ways to use the differential temperature, you know, like uh, to uh, generate maturity. So the maturity is just like a way of, you know, like um, accumulating the temperatures in a certain way that, again, the ASTM would explain. So the sensors, the advanced sensors these days, you don't even have to do this manually. You don't even need to look at the temperature history that the sensor is measuring. The sensor will spit out a, a, the maturity value directly. So you will have these maturity values on the x-axis. I mean, the F prime C on the... Uh, uh, yeah, the maturity is on the x-axis and the, the breaking points that you have on the y-axis. And you will start having these points and you will best fit a curve, you know, like between these points from the lab, you know, like specimens. You will have independent set that you left it in a random site, as we said, and you will try to see how the ones that you have in a random site correlate with this curve. And you keep doing this 
in you know like your lab or it uh, you know like out before the project even start and you, you repeat this as many times as it takes until you feel that your curve gives you like a reasonable predictions for the uh, independent data points that you are using to assist once you have the curve established and you are happy with it you will just deliver this curve to those who will be in the site that they don't necessarily need to know how this curve was developed or what it takes to develop this curve and they will just use it as a tool on the site so two years when the project is happening you know like they will put some sensors in the actual joint now that they are building and the sensor after 12 hours will spit a maturity number they will look at the curve that was developed you know like uh, for them and see what this you know like maturity number translates into in terms of the strengths and this is how they can get a sense of how the strengths is developed so that's pretty much like an overview of the process in general thank you thank you that that made it much clear thank you very much dr mustafa